from the historic capital of open wheel racing, Indianapolis, Indiana, it's USAC Unleashed. And now, stumping the loud pedal, ripping the lip, and letting her eat, here are your hosts, Dirty Dan and the Photo Man. Hey, 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 out there in USAC Unleashed land on the Performance Motorsports Network, this is Dirty Dan. We're into episode number seven. Man, I'm all fired up on this liquid nitro, Photo Man. Whew, I uh, I might have just drank a little too much. I'm starting to get a little lightheaded. This thing is great. <laughs> Some bad stuff. TJ Crawford's over here in Indiana with us now. How you doing tonight, Tommy Lee? I'm doing awesome. And as usual, jacked up on Nitro, too, so I'm ready to go. Uh oh, the state of Indiana's in some big time trouble. Behind the boards, of course, is producer extraordinaire, Mr. Bob Steele. How you doing tonight, Bob? Do, 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 do. Doing good. Doing great, my friend. It's an awesome night to be uh, producing such a great show. And uh, that's going to be another 50 bucks for me to say that. Oh, my <laughs> man. We are just blowing through this budget. Man, we're in negative numbers now, aren't we? I, I believe. At any rate. <laughs> Photo man, you and I had a busy week last week, brother. Yeah, I know. I know. I had a busy week. I mean, I don't know about you. Oh, I see how it's going now. <laughs> <laughs> man, we got we we done some pretty cool stuff last week. Man, we 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 got went up and we had a a, a special interview with Daryl Tate at his shop and and Lisa Shields Tate and their daughter Erica and and we're going to be getting that out sometime this week, you guys. Uh, you know, this week the show airs and and that was a pretty cool deal, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a cool little side project, you know, to do and, and look forward to doing a lot more. And, man, it could weather couldn't have been any better for a nice little road trip for uh, down there to Bloomington. That is a fact. It, it was nice. You know, my trip took me right through uh, the Hoosier National Forest. And, and I don't think there was a straight stretch of road on 37 there longer than about 40 or 50 feet. Man, it was all corners. I felt like I was in Bob's world, that turn left, turn right stuff. But, uh uh, on top of that, man, we got a sneak peek of uh, the new layout for Bloomington Speedway as well. Yeah, we rolled in there, kind of had to exchange this printer stuff we had going on and just stopped in there to check it out. And uh, Henry there that works the racetrack kind of showed us around, told us what was going on for this year. And uh, can't wait to get there and uh, actually see the racing. I can't either, man. And you know, I guess we can go ahead and put it out there, what we were told and what we've seen. Uh, there's a picture uh, I think we're going to be releasing a panoramic shot that you've done so, uh, probably tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll get you to work on that of the track. But we got to walk that thing. And, and like you said, Henry uh, was explaining to us what was going on there. And uh, they widened the corners. Uh, they fixed the blowouts on the straightaways. So it, I think the racing is going to be really cool there this year. I mean, you know, it, it has been. But, you know, let's just be honest. Uh, the tracks kind of fell off the last few years, and, and we've been hearing about that in the social media world and, you know, in the pits and things like that. But I'm pretty fired up about what we're going to see there when when the season fires off. How about you? Yeah, Henry sounds like he's got a great plan in place. You know, he basically told us he was going back to the old days of how it used to be, and that's good news for all us racers that love the way Bloomington Speedway used to be, and, and let's hope that that's what we get this year. And if so, it's it's going to be some bad racing down there. I agree 100%, man. And hey, and I got to uh, swing by. There's a, a bit short video on the USAC Unleashed Facebook page. Uh, I stopped by Terre Haute in my travels today, and uh, we crawled through the fence and uh, shot a little video in preparation for that uh, Silver Crown for the Sumar Classic on April 6th. So check that out. But for right now, we got some good guests lined up tonight, and I believe Taylor Fern's on hold with us, and we're going to get to her right after this commercial. On USAC Unleashed Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. We will be right back after this. Hey, racers, are you struggling with your shock package and your quarter midget, micro midget, sprint, or super modified? Then check out Infinity Shock. Infinity Shocks has the latest available technology and is ahead of the market today with their Infinitune isolation piston. Give Infinity Shocks a call today at 765 865 1073 and tell AJ that you want to join racers like Shane Cottle, Frank Flood, Steven Shabester. Robert Ballou, Shane Cockrum, and Thomas Mesrol in Victory Lane. Infinity Shocks, home of 300 plus A main wins in 2013, including three golden drillers from the Tulsa Shootout, the Donnie Ray Crawford Memorial, and the Oklahoma Micronationals, just to name a few. For personalized tech service, give AJ a call at Infinity Shocks at 765 865 1073. Don't be like the competition. 
be the competition. Infinity Shock. Sixby Apparel gives you the winning look. At Sixby Apparel, our award-winning design team gives your team style on or off the track. It's not too late to call Sixby Apparel now. You could be the best dressed crew at your next race or trade show. And for you smaller teams, Sixby Apparel has no minimum on orders, so you can get the same look the big teams like Feld Motorsports, Lucas Oil Products, and more do at a great price. Call Sixby Apparel now at 702-587-3313. That's 702-587-3313. Or log on to SixbyApparel.com. And now, back to the guy that thinks he's a one-man snake pit, Dirty Dan and the Photo Man. Yeah, he also thinks he's a one-man radio show, too, sometimes. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. My mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm having little... technical problems. I'm going to have to get out, out of here. Throw you under the bus a little bit there, but we're going to get into our first guest tonight, and it's a young lady that I've known for quite some time, and uh, she's a, definitely a big and up-and-coming star in the world of motorsports, and that's Miss Taylor Ferns. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, you know, I've been uh, we've been talking about who we we're going to have on this week, and you know, obviously with uh, getting ready to go into our Silver Crown Series opener here in a couple weeks, uh, definitely wanted to have you on and see how you've been. Yeah, um, I've just been. I can't wait till the season gets start uh, get started here. I feel like we've been off for forever. I haven't been in a race car since Chili Bowl, so I've definitely been having the itching to get back in, and I can't wait to get racing again i know Terre Haute's coming up uh in the next week and a half here is coming up here pretty quick um can't wait to get back in the car and i just hope this snow stops so we can actually get back on the racetrack yeah i'm with you there it's definitely been a long winter and we're definitely all itching to get back out there to the racetrack and in fact today we had a little bit of snow here in kokomo it wasn't very uh very good to the eyes to see um Let's talk a little bit about, you know, your history. Like, you've been racing a long time. When was the first year you started racing? Um, I first started back racing in 2002. I was six years old, so I'm 18 now. So I'm going into my 12th year racing, which makes me feel really old. But compared to my teammates and stuff, they're older than me, and they've been doing a lot longer than me, and I'm kind of like the baby of the bunch. But I still feel kind of old, even at 18. So going on my 12th year, and I got started in racing. I come from a racing background like most of us do. Um, My uncle on my mom's side, he um, used to race local stock cars at the local local short tracks up in Michigan and kind of went up through the ranks and did some ARCA stuff. And one year, back in 2002, like I said, when I was six, our neighbors had a quarter midget, and my dad had always been wanting to get my brother and sister and I into it somehow. And that was kind of his way. And he started searching them on the Internet. And we went, we drove up to Lansing, Michigan, which is an hour and a half from my house. Um, and we found a car for sale. And I sat in the car and I just automatically fell in love with it. And I've been hooked ever since. So 12 years later, and we're still going strong. Yeah, and you you bring up, you know, your dad, and, you know, Big Jim Fern, as we all know him. And he's definitely you know, been a big, you know, supporter behind you and, you know, obviously got you going and stuff like that. And that's where I first met you was all three of you were racing 600s at uh, little dirt tracks down here in Indiana and stuff like that. And you, uh, you've gone on and, and brother and sister have kind of moved on to other things, haven't they? Yeah, my brother and sister, you know, they love, they both love racing, but um, as I started getting older and I think it was when I turned 12 and I started racing, some of the USEC stuff and the Ken Midget cars and things like that. My sister's a year and a half younger than me, and we were both still racing 600s at the time, and she started missing a lot of races and wanted to go play softball and things like that, and my dad kind of sat her down and was like, what do you want to do? Do you want to play softball or do you want to um, stick with racing? Like, he'll, My dad supports us no matter what we do, and my sister just kind of went towards the softball route, and she's still playing softball and volleyball, and my brother just kind of grew out of the cars, and after junior sprints, he told my dad he didn't want to go to anything higher than uh, a junior sprint. He didn't want to race a 600. He thought we were crazy for racing those. So um, after junior sprints, he was just kind of done, and he's off in the sports world playing football, basketball, baseball, you name it. My brother will probably play it. So they kind of have their own sports, but racing's always been my number one passion, and my dad has always been continuously supportive of that too so we all kind of have our own little niche 
Yeah, and you know, over your career, you've you've definitely ran a lot of different race cars: quarter midgets, six hundreds, midgets, pavement sprint cars, silver crown cars, and ARCA cars. Uh, let's talk about you know, did did it build on each other? You know, did you take one from one thing and build and move to the next one, or has anything kind of helped make you better in anything else? Or, um, I think like. I feel like it's just kind of gone up the ladder, and I think as you go up the ladder in racing, as you, I guess you could say, it, everything just kind of feeds off one another. Um, like I know going from the quarter midgets and going to the 600s, that was a completely different thing for me. Um, I've never raced dirt before be, before I got into a 600, so that was definitely a new venture for me, and it took me about a year to finally figure it out. But once I did, we started winning races and things like that. But then when I started getting into the use that Kenny Mystic cars, my dad would always say to me, just drive it like your quarter midget. It's just like the late 160 car, except obviously a lot faster and a lot bigger. And everything just kind of continually builds off of that. Like I know my dirt midget, I would kind of go off how I drove my 600. So, I mean, everything just kind of continually goes off one another. And I know when I started doing a lot of the stock car stuff last year and the ARCA cars, I would kind of relate that back to my Silver Crown car the pavement car because um, my silver crown pavement car was a lot like my stock car because the silver crown car was the heaviest car that I've ever driven before I got into a stock car. So, and it's a lot longer races than the silver crown races and things like that. So I would kind of just kind of go off the silver crown car in order to adapt more to the ARCA car. So I think just going up the ladder and racing, everything will kind of build off one another one way or the other. Yeah. And you bring up the silver crown cars and, Obviously, with the Silver Crown race coming up here in a few weeks at Terre Haute, let's talk about your your plans for this year and, uh, you know, your Silver Crown plans and, and your midget plans for this year. Um, well, as of right now, I've, uh, as of right now, I plan on doing the full USEC Silver Crown schedule, dirt and pavement, which I'm really excited about. Um, I love the Silver Crown cars, so whenever I get the chance to race them, it's always, we always have a good time, and... Right now, we're only planning on doing seven USEC midget races, and the reason being to that is because this year I'm going to be racing basically full-time a 410 wing sprint car. So um, a few years ago when I was 14, I kind of did eight races in a dirt 410 wing sprint car, and I loved it. But then um, my dad kind of sat me down and gave me a decision between do I want to do the dirt stuff or do I want to go stock car racing? And I said both, and the first thing that was sold was the wing sprint cars, which kind of I was really upset about, but I wanted to go stock car racing at the time. And so now we're kind of back where we started from. We're back with the wing sprint cars, and I just can't wait. We have a stack schedule. I know we have about 50 races right now, but we're just going to kind of build off that, and we're just going to race. I just want That's all I want to do is race, so that's just what we're going to do this year is race and have fun. And I haven't been in the winner's circle in a while, so uh, hopefully we can get a few wins and get that off my back. And just we're just going to have fun this year and just race as much as we can. Yeah, and, you know, I'm sure you're going to get back into the winner's circle real soon. You're definitely uh, very talented and have a very wide list of accomplishments. Uh, you know, in fact, you even in USAC, you have the title as the winningest female in driver in USAC and that that's a pretty prestigious title and uh you know how do you feel about having a title that big I mean obviously when I was younger and I would go to the USAC races I would always watch Stephanie Mockler and Allison McLeod and I would just always look up to them and I that's just something that I've always wanted to achieve and so when I started racing in USAC and I would click one win off after another and I think I achieved it after about two and a half years racing in USAC I mean, to be the winningest female in USAC history, I mean, I don't really realize it now, but I know 20, 30 years from now, I'll look back and be and say to myself, wow, that was me, and I can't believe I did that. But, I mean, it's such a huge, prestigious honor, and that's really something that I hold, hold close to my heart. But, I mean, being on the racetrack, I'm just like, every, I'm just like everybody else. I'm just another racer. Once I strap in the car and I put on my helmet, I'm just like one of the guys. I mean, the car doesn't know any different. So when I go on the track, I have the same goal as everybody else, and that is to win the race. So being the one that's female in music history is definitely a really cool thing to have. But on the racetrack, I just like being one of the guys mainly. Well, Taylor, we, we definitely loved having you on tonight. And, uh, you know, look forward to catching you up, you up with you here in a few weeks at Terre Haute. And uh, we'll definitely stop by and say hi. And 
for our fans out there, where's uh, some of the places they can get a hold of you and contact you? Um, well, they can either come to the races and support me at the racetrack. My schedule's on my website, taylorferns.com, or you can follow me on Twitter at taylorferns. I have a Facebook fan page, which is taylorferns, and, um, or an Instagram account. Just any kind of new form of social media out there, I probably have it. So um, just definitely follow my website and my fan page for the most recent updates and things like that, and just come out to the races. We're going to have such a good time this year, and I can't wait till the season gets going. Well, Taylor, we loved having you on. Make sure you tell your mom and dad I said hi, and we'll catch up with you at Terre Haute, okay? I will. Sounds good. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Then that was Taylor Ferns, and when we're, we'll be right back from commercial right after this. Got a high-performance racing engine? Then you know pushing these engines to the limit often sacrifices reliability. ProGlide Coatings will let your oil do its job to the best of its ability. By reducing friction on the rotating assembly in your engine, reliability can be restored. Applying ProGlide Coatings to internal parts, main and rod bearings, cranks, cams, pistons, rings, and even cylinders will improve reliability as well as add unimaginable performance. Reducing metal-to-metal -metal contact with ProGlide Coatings can have profound results, making your engine not only perform better, but give you or your engine builder peace of mind. For more information about these or our industrial applications, go to www.ProGlideCoatings.com or to call at 570-204-2544. Ever wonder what keeps the USAC Unleashed radio team fired up besides our passion for racing? Crack open a can of the best tasting energy drink on earth, Liquid Nitro. Liquid Nitro products are infused with nothing but the finest ingredients, including three herbs and two B vitamins to give you the best quality energy drink your body can handle. Liquid Nitro Regular, Liquid Nitro Low Carb, and Liquid Nitro Tropical Storm Energy Drinks contain a blend of herbs and vitamins that produce clean energy without the crash or aftertaste and without those harmful side effects. Also, check out their line of Liquid Nitro Shooters, a three ounce exotic berry flavored energy shot that tantalizes your taste buds. And hey guys, you might be interested in their Liquid Nitro Fuel for Passion. It's an all-natural energy shot with a proprietary blend that helps us men feel, well, more productive. Check out their Facebook page at Liquid Nitro Beverages Midwest or their website at nitrobeverages.com. Real energy, no bull, Liquid Nitro. And now, back to the guy that gets his jollies from Racing R Factor because actually getting into a race car scares the living hell out of him. It's the Photo Man and Dirty Dan. <laughs> photo Man, we're going to have to change that this year. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm not getting in any race car. Oh, uh, we're going to get you in a race car. I'll bet this next <laughs> guest can talk you into it. But, hey, we got Mr. Alex Bride on the phone with us tonight. How you doing, Alex? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. Not a problem, man. I'm pretty fired up to have you on here. But we got a bunch of rookie stripers out there. Tell us uh, where you're from and, and what you're racing, buddy. Uh, I'm from Collegeville, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm actually running a couple different cars this year. Um, mainly, I'm running for my grandfather, uh, our midget that we have. Um, we're doing some USAC shows, the big USAC shows mainly, and then we're going to fill in with ARDC and some Power Eye shows. And then um, I also, I'm actually up at uh, Rich Glosser's shop right now. He owns a 600. I'm racing for him this year and a couple 600 shows. And then I um, actually raced this Saturday night up in Connecticut. I'm running a NEMA light for Greg Olson. Man, you're traveling all over the place. Yep, I absolutely love it. Now, I, I know you, you, you run a lot up there in the Pennsylvania area, and you run at a track up there in Coonstown, Pennsylvania. Can you tell us a little bit about what you run there and a little bit about that track? Uh, Kutztown, yeah. Um, that's, uh, it's, it's nice. I think it's a fifth mile. Um, run wingless 600s there. And uh, we run there, I think it's just about every Wednesday night of uh, the summer. And that's, that's the perfect size for those type cars, um, perfect size track. It's great racing, top and bottom. Um, I think they get about a car count of about 35 to 40 cars every week there, too. They do. They, they get a lot of cars there. Actually, we're going to uh, be doing a live show from there in May sometime. I believe we'll be releasing some more information about that in the coming weeks. But uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about what you got. I know you and I talked earlier today, and tell us a little bit about what you got for 2014. 
Uh, I think we have uh, 75-plus races scheduled, uh, if we can do all of them. I mean, just depending on how the year goes, I guess. Um, like, the main show is going to be the, my grandfather's midget, number 77. Uh, that, that's, that's our main goal. I mean, we came off with the fourth-place run at the Chili Bowl, and I'm really pumped for the season to see how it goes. Uh, I think we got a good shot at winning a lot of the big races and uh, hopefully moving up into a sprint car soon. But, I mean, that's only when the opportunity presents itself. Now, talk to us about the Chili Bowl out there. You, you had a pretty successful run out there on preliminary night. So kind of run us through the chain of events out there this, this past season, this past Chili Bowl. Yeah, on a prelim night, I mean, we got to start off right. Uh, got won the first heat. Uh, got second in the in the uh, qualifier. I mean, I mean, it was a stacked qualifier, qualifier too. Uh, that ended up putting us outside pole for the prelim feature. And uh, between me, Jonathan Beeson, and Zach Dom, I mean, we were going at it. Uh, went green the whole 25 laps, ended up third. So that, that locked me in for Saturday night. And, uh, I mean, out of 290-plus entries there, that to be locked in from your prelim night, that's – that's awesome, and um, and our goal was just to make the show this year, um, and then uh, I guess you pull for position, the top twelve guys that make it in from prelim night. Well, I I picked the worst one. I should have had somebody else pull for me because I always I always pull bad. But uh, I picked twelve and didn't get that great of a start. I ended up dropping back to about fifteenth or sixteenth, and uh, got up to. I think I was back there for a while. I got up to 10th, I think, and, and up until like 15 laps ago, and then I started, I got on the gas, I guess, and uh, moved my way up. I was dicing it up with um, Sammy Swindell, even though he was a lap down. He held me up for a little bit, but uh, still ended up with fourth place finish. And I don't know if you wouldn't have been there. It might have been a different story, though. <laughs> that's that's got to get you fired up running against somebody like sammy like that at the chili bowl and running them hard but how before the chili bowl come about how much uh experience or how how many races have you had in the midget prior to that uh i've ran this i guess this is the start of my fifth season in a midget um i i mean i i started out the first year and was just running ardc shows i think i did about 13 shows and that was it and uh, then the second and third year started gearing up a little bit more, and then it wasn't until last year that we that I probably did I don't know about thirty five to forty midget shows um, total between here and down in Australia. Um, and I think that also helped, you know, going down to Australia and and racing during the winter when everybody else is off. Um, I didn't have to knock any rust off, you know. I, I was ready to go right away, so. I, I I agree with you. I think that helps when when you can race through the off season like that, and, and you don't you know you don't have to spend the first couple of races of the year trying to like you said knock the rust off. But um, we we need to talk about your sponsorship situation, Alex, and and what you're trying to do this year and and things like that. So can you tell me a little bit about what you got going on in the sponsor hunt, hunt right now? Um, yeah, right now uh, I mean we I put together the schedule it's i guess the ultimate schedule that I want to do and my grandfather wants to do but um I think we only have the budget to do a little bit more than the first half of it and if we hit all the shows we only have enough to do the first half and uh you know we I I have some sponsors that help me out like PXP Racewear and and Bell Racing Helmets but that that's just me personally nothing for the car itself so um I'm actually, the, I, I just got a lead today. Uh, Josh McGovern out of Bechtelsville, he's, he's uh, Diamond Disposal Service. He's actually willing to help out for the Grandview races. But uh, as far as, you know, the, the, the traveling races, that's what, that's what hurts us. And, uh, and they're, the, they're the big races that I want to do out west, like Midget Week and Gold Crown, Four Crown, um, and maybe Power Eye Midget Week too, if we if we can pull it off. But uh, uh, we're definitely looking for some help, and I, I think we would be a better team if we we had some help too. You know, we'd be able to put back more into the car. Uh, I mean, new tires, just fuel to get to the track. Would any anything helps? So now, Alex, uh, in the sponsorship hunt here, how do people get a hold of you if there, if there's a sponsor out there that wants to help you out, especially after the run that 
you had in Florida. I mean, the results are there, like we was talking with the Chili Bowl and things like that. But how do people get a hold of you uh, to throw some money your way? Uh, the best way, I guess, would to get a hold of me would would probably be if you don't have my number or email, uh, Facebook or Twitter. Um, and, and my email is a bright eight six at aol dot com. Or if, if if somebody's not listening right now or they missed that, I mean, just go to my Facebook and message me. Um, I'm looking to get a website up maybe this year, uh, but I mean that, that also costs money too. So. Um, Facebook is probably the easiest way to get a hold of me, and then we can exchange emails or phone numbers or anything like that. So um, for anybody trying to contact me, and I mean, I'm willing to promote any businesses out there, and or just about, I guess. Um, <laughs> to, to, they, I mean, I, I want to help them as much as they can help me, you know, so it, it's a two-way street. You're, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. There's got to be a return on investment on both ends. And, and I think you're the, you're the kid to do it, man. The results are there uh, and things like that. But, Alex, we're going to catch up with you later on this season. We're definitely going to promote your information out there. And uh, we want to thank you for being on the show tonight with us. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. That was Alex Bright. And you can uh, find his information over there on the USAC Unleashed radio page. And we will be right back after this commercial. Hey, racers. Are you looking for an edge in your training program to put you over the top? Well, check out Racer's Edge Supplements. Racer's Edge Supplements are the best racing supplements in the business. Whether you need more energy to get you through your day, better concentration, or a weight loss supplement that will help you get lighter and go faster, Racer's Edge Supplements is what you need. With nine products currently available and more on the way, Racer's Edge Supplements will be all you need to get you through your season. Visit us online at RacersEdgeSupplements.com. That's RacersEdgeSupplements.com. Racers Edge Supplements, the edge you need to get you to victory lane. Hey racers, you know the amount of time and effort you put in at the shop getting your bullet ready to do battle is huge. Shouldn't the way you look when you climb out of that sick looking ride in victory lane be just as important? Well hell yeah it should. Turn Noah's Shell Shock Custom Helmet Painting loose on a custom lid designed just for you. Join the Shell Shock list of racers like Ryan Briscoe, Joey Saldana, Christopher Bell, Matt Crafton, Bud Cady, Dominic Selzy, Kenny Rutz, Spud Allen, Joey Colder, and many, many more. Go to www.shellshockpaint.com or give them a call at 704-929-8545 and join the Shell Shock list of champions today. Follow Shell Shock on Twitter at Shell Shock Co. And be sure to check out the full Shell Shock gallery on Facebook at Shell Shock. And remember, only the best wear the SS. And now, back to the guy who got thrown out of the pits for sneaking moonshine into the track in his fuel cell. It's Dirty Dan and the Photo Man. Is that what made you so fast, Dan? That is exactly what made me so fast. You would not believe the <laughs> octane rating in that stuff. Well, let's talk to another guy that's pretty fast here. We got uh, Chad Baseflug with us here tonight. Chad, how you doing? Good, guys. How are you? Good, man. We're, uh, we're excited to have you on. We've been pumped up about this one, and, uh, you know, you're a pretty cool guy to talk to, and... Uh, Definitely look forward to having you on tonight. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, some some say that, and some probably have other opinions on me, but uh, we're <laughs> the good ones, I guess. Nah, you're you're always pretty cool mm -hmm. to hang out with and stuff like that. And let's, uh, let's for all the people out there that maybe don't know who Chad Baseflug is, which I'd be surprised, uh, let's tell everybody, you know, who you are, where you're from, and what you're running. Well, I, uh, I grew up, I was born in Carmichael, California. Um, I grew up in Hanford, California, raced since I was nine, uh, you know, race micros all the way up through the ranks to the 360 uh, nominally sprint car and then made the move to the 410s, ran the USAC CRA for about the majority of the season, but we kind of hit and missed towards the end of the season and, and started running a little more 360 stuff that was closer by and travel, so uh, you got to travel so much out west. And then 2006, I graduated high school, and two months later, I moved back to Indiana and just been back here ever since, living the dream. Well, let's talk about that. What you know, we see a lot of guys that come from California out here to Indiana to race and all that stuff. And you know, what is your opinion on why do the guys make the trek out here, and and what's the advantage of coming out here? Well, where I, where I grew up from, out in California, it was six hours to go to Paris every Saturday morning. Um, you know, and, and being in high school, I didn't get to do much Friday nights or nothing because I had to get up at six o'clock in the morning and, and make the long tow to Paris to race one night a week and. And that was all we got to race. Sunday, you drove all the way home, washed the car, 
I did homework, and then it was another week all over again, waiting until the next Saturday. So, uh, you know, out here, last year I raced 50-some races, or almost 60 races. Me and Paul ran 44 together, and the furthest, you know, I had to go away from home was two and a half hours of Waynesfield with him. So it's just, you can race so much more, so, so you know, so much closer to home at the same time, sleeping in your own bed, <clears throat> all the, you know, the toughest competitions back here. I mean, you just, you learn so much by racing so much and racing with, with, you know, the top names. Um, I mean, I remember growing up in California and hearing, you know, Dave Darland and all these guys that you only hear of, you only get to see once a year come out west, and then, and then you move back here and you race against them every weekend. And I still got friends that, you know, those guys are, they, they idolize and they're like superstars to them. So, you know, now, now I call them my friends. So uh, it's, it's cool. It's definitely a, it's a culture shock to come 2,600 miles east and, you know, music changes and everything else because <laughs> nobody's heard of it around here yet. Now, now, what music are, are you talking about, Chad? Oh, just about anything, anything and everything. If you, <laughs> well, that's, that's what I was getting at. What do you listen to? What, what do you listen to in the off time? You're one of those cool kids. What do I listen to? I listen to just about everything. Uh, you know, usually rock, my my preferred. Um, you know, every now and then you get a little hip hop in there or a little country, just depending on uh, you know if I want my house back, my dog back, my cat back. But uh, we'll go the country <laughs> route. But <laughs> but uh, you know, it's just. It's just different. I mean, loud pedal. I've heard so many people talk about how loud pedal always has the hippest and up to date songs, but those songs have been out in California for a couple months, so it's all new and cool out here. But <laughs> to them, they've been hearing it on the radio for quite some time. But you know, it's just a it's a it's a change. <clears throat> I was kind of used to it. My mom's from Columbus, Indiana, and her whole side of the family was so it wasn't too big of a change for me coming back here every two years when I was a kid. So I got to see a lot of it then and. I've seen a lot of it now. Now, I, I see you post a lot of pictures on your Facebook page. You're really active on Twitter and Facebook. But I see some of these pictures you post with your Midwest shades, and, and, and they're the big bright, you know, the big black lenses. And then I, I, didn't I see you post one the other day that had some, like, a wood grain earpieces on it? Yeah, they've, they've got about a little bit of everything. Um, I mean, they've been a good sponsor of mine, Joshua Shaw from uh, Shaw and Vintage Hot Rods, who does all my silver leaf on my car. He got me hooked up with them a couple of years ago their sponsor of his <clears throat> we were talking and uh you know i said well we need to get them hooked up on with me on my car and so it you know it, it ended up happening and, and they've taken good care of me they've got you know uh, hundreds of different lines of shades different colored lenses polarized you know you can get bamboo polarized they've got like a skateboard wood um i mean they've got options that are endless and then you know they got tons of apparel and hats and everything so uh you know, MidwestShades.com is their website. They've done wonders for me. They're 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 looking to branch out a little more. So we've got some upcoming things with me and including them um, that we're going to probably be doing here in the in the near future. So everybody, stay tuned and check them out on Instagram as well. Definitely going to have to do that. Now you mentioned something there, uh, the uh, the guy that was doing your silver leaf and and the silver leaf gold leaf. That that's really old school quality. But I know you're into that kind of thing. Can you tell us a little bit about about what you're into uh, uh, with the history of the sport? Yeah, I, I actually had the chance. Uh, my friend Josh Shaw that does all the, the pinstriping. He's uh, pretty world renowned down in Cincinnati area, and and he actually restores vintage sprint cars and 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 Indy cars and all that and. We actually got to have a play day two years ago. We're planning on doing it every year, but we didn't get to do it last year. Um, but we, you know, two years ago we got to have a fun little play day and got to bring the old uh, vintage cars out. You know, he had a 1949 and uh, he had all kinds, 60s, 70s sprint cars and midgets, and we kind of got to jump in them and haul out them. So it gives you a whole new. Resource. And and ever since then, you know, I've had a whole other look on vintage stuff and. And so I kind of try and keep that alive now with with my own personal car, with the silver leaf, and it's just a it's a custom touch I feel as well. So I like to stand out and you know have a good looking car. I know it doesn't make you go fast, but but it draws the attention, and and that's you know that's kind of one reason you're out there racing to gain fans and then gain attention for your sponsors, and and uh, you know it all it all progresses from there. Now you you talk about uh, you know the look of the car don't make it go fast but you you've got stars on the tank tell me about those what's what's those represent and what's that all about you know it's just there's just always fun to to I always have fun building a nice good looking car and and you know it's just something that I enjoy doing um, I've got a friend out in California that also helps me out doing logo designs and graphics and and things like that so he helps me out and 
and it's well you got this stormtrooper on your tanks what i was referring the to the stormtrooper oh that yeah that's, <laughs> that's a, i was trying to figure out what you're talking about uh that's actually something funny that that josh did as well he he when i first built the car he came up and we were hanging out here in indy and and at my shop, and, and it was just all white and black. There's no decals on it, and everything is black or white. I mean, there's no, everything's black. So he's like, dude, this thing looks like a stormtrooper car with the black and white seat, everything like that. So then next thing you know, he he told me when he picked the fuel cell up and to go do the silver leaf, he said, I'm going to put a stormtrooper on here somewhere. And, and next thing you know, he had he had a stormtrooper pinup model on the on the tail tank that he hand-painted and, and did some hand pin striping around, and, and it's just cool. And and so we in- incorporated that into the shirts for the year and, and everything else. So um, I actually had him touch it up again this off season. So it looks it looks sharp. Everybody needs to come check it out and uh, create a finishing to the powder coat job on the frame. And it's got it's a metallic black. So it's uh, it's all different from from all the others. That's for sure. Now, Chad, you got some special things going on for 2014. First of all, tell us a little bit about your plans, and then uh, kind of explain what you got going on on your website for you and Paul. Yeah, we got a, you know, I've got, I got reached from a few people from Pennsylvania that, that want to help and they're going to try and, and they're doing all they can to help me come to Eastern Storm. So, um, you know, we've got a, we've got a link on, on my uh, website that you can go to. It's chatbasicallyracing.com. Um, you know, we got a, we've got a pretty good deal to where people can, you know, fans can help out to make this possible as well. We're, we're about there, but we're not quite, you know, it, it costs a lot to, to go. And I work a full time job, you know, as well as race. So, to just afford everything that I do and, and to go racing. So, um, you know, if the fans want to help out, it'd be greatly appreciated. I think set up on there to where if they spend, you know, they donate a hundred dollars, they get a free shirt, koozie, and, and there's a couple other little things that we're taking down. So, um, I mean, you're, you're donating, but you're, we're giving back, trying to give back as much as possible. And in every donation, I'm also helping to go to Pennsylvania, but that's also going to help, uh, to get Paul to run the entire sprint week. So last year, he only ran three shows, but we didn't finish out of the top ten all three of those shows. So I told him this year we need to run all all seven of them, and and he's he's for it, but he just said we just got to get some money. So hopefully some fans are you know out there listening and want to kick in and help out. You know there's a there's multiple options on that website under the store. So just go to that link and and check it out. There's a little little biography there. This is Paul's 57th year, so I'm really trying to make it something memorable for him and and for everybody involved as well. Paul's a good guy, and that's very important. You're correct. What What's the uh, address for your website there, Chad, where, where people can go check that out at? It's chadbaseflutracing.com. Uh, you can go on my fan page, uh, on my Facebook page, I mean, my Twitter, my Instagram. It's all on all of those. So um, go on there, check it out, and, and just and you know roam around. There's a lot of cool pictures on there. He's got some good pictures of Paul and <clears throat> got the new shirt design for, for Paul's uh, 57th year anniversary T-shirt that I'm doing. I'm also donating... They're twenty five dollars. They're the the Gildan Dry Blend, the nice T shirt and everything. And I've got them online for twenty five, and five dollars goes to Paul to help this season as well. So I'm uh, you know I'm I'm putting into this thing as much as I can, and you know as much as it'll allow me as well. So it's not a not a bar ride, but it's not a free ride. So I, I do all I can to help Paul. I mean he deserves it. He's been racing so long, and and he's given me a good opportunity to drive his race car and have a very successful year last year. So hopefully we can stretch that out this year. That's some pretty cool stuff, Chad. Now, now, who's we mentioned Midwest Shades, but who's some of the other sponsors that you have at this point uh, in the season? Uh, looking forward to 2014. Every time I go to do something with sponsors, it's so hard to to justify because <laughs> Paul's got so many, and then I've got you know so many to help. But you know, I've, I've got Midwest Shades, Butler Built Seats, Henchman Uniforms, Indy Race Parts, Bell Helmets, uh, Willwood Brakes came on board with me this year as well. So you know, I've got I've got several people that are that are helping me to make. My my racing go around as well, um, you know. Creative finishing, they do all the powder coating. They're just out of Greensburg, and but Paul, you know, he's got Buzz Auto Sales, Physical Medicine Consultants, and and K and Air Filters, and uh, Shaw Hot Rods, and just everybody that helps out. Kircher's Engines, they help him out. Jeff Claxton does mine, so um, you know it's it's a it's a big long circle of people that help both both sides of the field to make it possible. And, and get us to the track every weekend. So we got to thank them. And, and, you know, we're always looking for more. So we got, you know, there's plenty of ways to get a hold of me, social media, my website, anywhere. So You are a pretty easy guy to get a hold of on Facebook, Twitter, and, and you're <laughs> an easy guy to find. We're going to check you out over at uh, Brownstown Speedway this Saturday night at the No Way Out 40. 
and uh, talk to you some more over there, Chad. But thanks for being on the show tonight, my man. Not a problem, guys. Yeah, anybody down that way, stop by. Uh, Christine and my mom and all them are going to be out front selling T-shirts, so and koozies and the midget shirts that I drove at Chili Bowl. We might have some midget races this year as well with them, so stop by and grab some apparel. We will definitely do that, and there you have it. Chad Bosflug, he, he's, he's such a superstar, man. you got to wear Midwest shades when you talk to him. All right, we'll be back with some more USAC Unleashed Radio and Mr. Rico Abreu right after these commercials. Waka Racing Promotions is a public relations team determined to grow and expand your name in the world of racing while guiding your image and car to the top. We use multiple different techniques from press releases, social media pages, and websites to boom your team or company ahead of the rest. Whether it be your normal race team wanting a sponsorship proposal or a full-blown touring series needing PR help, Walker Racing Promotions can cover it all. Head to walkerracingpromotion.com to learn more on how you can expand your PR program with Walker Racing Promotions. Got a high-performance racing engine? Then you know pushing these engines to the limit often sacrifices reliability. ProGlide Coatings will let your oil do its job to the best of its ability. By reducing friction on the rotating assembly in your engine, reliability can be restored. Applying ProGlide Coatings to internal parts, main and rod bearings, cranks, cams, pistons, rings, and even cylinders will improve reliability as well as add unimaginable performance. Reducing metal-to-metal -metal contact with ProGlide Coatings can have profound results making your engine not only perform better, but give you or your engine builder peace of mind. For more information about these or our industrial applications, go to www.proglidecoatings.com or to call at 570-204-2544. And now, back to the guy that thinks McDreamy is Dave Darlin. It's the Photo Man and Dirty Dan. The Photo Man and Dirty Dan and Dave Darlin McDreamy, Photo Man. What's up with that? <laughs> I have no idea. That must have came from you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have to get some in that uh, that are slamming me, man. All right. <laughs> we have one of the hottest shoes in the dirt world right now on the phone with us, Mr. Rico Abreu. How you doing tonight, brother? Good. How are you guys doing? We're doing all right, man. We're all jacked up on some liquid nitro around here tonight. There you go. <laughs> all oh, right, yeah. Rico. Man, you've had a busy, busy uh, last couple weeks here, you picked up a big win in the World Outlaws out there in California, and then you backed it up with a 360 win. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, you know, I've, I've had a good start of my year. Uh, you know, I've had the good, very fortunate to race. I've raced already uh, 17 races this year. Uh, so I started in Florida and, uh, you know, just running with the Outlaws here on the West, this West Coast swing, and then I'm uh, going to go meet up with USAC, uh, the Grand Prix, uh, there at Kokomo here in a couple weeks. Cannot wait to catch up with you there. Let's, let's back up to the beginning of 2014 and your chili bowl run out there in that midget. Uh, there was a little bit of controversy out there. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I got through my prelim night and, uh, started up front in that B main and got, uh, got ahead of that B main and won. And then, uh, my feature on Saturday, I got to, got to fourth and, uh, I spun out. Uh, so I just flat. So I was just, you know, just driving. You know, it's, it's, you get to the chili bowl and there's so much build up, and uh, you know, it's like it's it's easy to say it's just another race, but it's 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 more than just another race. It's the uh, it's the chili bowl, and you know, it's a race everyone wants to mark off their resume and you know put on their resume. And uh, you know, I feel that Keith Coons built uh, the cars that can win that race, and uh, you know, I'm. I'm already excited to get there next year. Now you're running for Keith Coons again in the in the USAC midgets this year, aren't you? Yes, that's the plan. Yep. And what else you got planned for 2014? I've I've heard through I the got, grapevine there's a little more than a hundred races or so that you got scheduled. Yeah, I got about a hundred and thirty races. Well, now it's probably a hundred and fifteen. But uh, I got um, the sprint the, with the outlaws there he, out here, and then uh, I'm going to run some King of the Wet, some four ten races through april out here and then uh first week of may i'm gonna meet back up with the outlaws at eldora and uh and race through the midwest wing 410s and uh and then the and then the 360 some 360 races through the midwest and bounce back and forth from knoxville to you know knoxville local shows the the usac midget races uh i'm gonna run the whole usac midget schedule this year so that'll be uh 
that'll be my priority for sure, and uh, I'll go from there. I cannot wait to see that, man. I, I do. You know, we was just talking before the show, Rico, and, and, and I made the statement that I think this is going to be your breakout year in USAC and the Midgets, uh, the way you've started off this season. Do you feel that way as well, or, or do you even think about things Yeah, like I that? think last year, well, you can't get too excited about it, but last year uh, we ended the year really good. So um, we, we've, I haven't really raced. I raced with Keith on Sunday there in Port City, Oklahoma, and ran six. uh and, uh, you know, Keith's cars are fast. Uh, you know, he, he ran first, second, and sixth, uh, won both nights. And, and you know, I, I got the privilege to fly out there and race with them. And uh, I started pretty far back, so the track position was huge uh, sat- Sunday night. And But I got to pass, and I got to race. And, uh, you know, we shook down a brand-new car that he built for me. And so that's going to be our primary car that we'll run with this, the whole USAC deal. And whatever power I race is, we can you know, fit in on my schedule. Now you, you, uh, running with Keith, as, as we said, running with Keith in, in the USAC schedule here in the midgets, but your teammates, your, you, you're a teammate, uh, with Christopher yeah, Bell they- and Kyle Larson on select occasions. But what I want to talk about is that track that you have out there at the winery and those outlaw carts where, you know, we see the videos with you and Larson and some other guys out there. And tell, tell me a little bit about what you're doing, what you guys get together and do out there. Oh, uh, we did. We uh, we got some outlaw carts here at the house. Well, we got two of them, and uh, and then we'll, we'll just get. We'll I'll call up some friends and that have outlaw carts, and they'll come, and uh, we'll race here at the house. Uh, I think we're planning on having a charity race here in uh, somewhere around June, some one weekend in June, and uh, gonna gonna do a charity race for education here in my hometown, and try to put together something where Kyle can be here, and uh, you know a couple other friends that that are pretty I'm pretty close with and they can bring their go karts up and uh you know we'll just go out there and have some fun. Uh, I really fortunate to have this race track here. It's just uh you know it's, it's we got our go karts down where you just uh you just put some fuel in them and go out there and race around. Uh you know so we got the track condition down. Uh, it took us a lot a lot to figure out just because the soil is so different here with this with uh the clay in it and you can't overwater it and it it gets nice now that we got it figured out. It, it's pretty cool, man. You, get over there to YouTube, folks, and, and just type in Rico Abreu and Outlaw Cart and take a look at some of those videos. But we always hear about how, how hard ch- of a charger you are, Rico. I mean, you're a gasser. And and the reason I bring that up, I mean, you guys out there, you are, are out there trading slide jobs and slamming. You guys get serious there. But does that transfer over? Um, you know, do, do you consider that practice? I realize it's an Outlaw Cart, and then you go to midgets and, and the wing yeah. stuff that you run, the sprint cars. But uh, you run it the same way, whether you're in that card on that track or, or you're racing. What do you have to say to the people out there that, that talk about how hard to charge you are and, and things like that? Yeah, I just, uh, like, uh, like uh, I just, you know, I just don't, uh, I just, you know, I race the same way, you know, where anything I'm doing, if we're racing golf carts or if we're racing motorcycles with outlaw carts to the sprint car, and uh, you just can't give up. Uh, you know, really, that's uh you can't give up on you know what you're doing and what you want, what you love to do, and uh, this is something I've really fell in love with over the past four years of my you know open wheel career, and uh, you know it's, I just I'm just not looking back. Now, Rico, last year you had some pretty big wins in the midget. You know, the first one that comes to mind is you know the midget win at the Four Crown, and like you said, you ended on such a good note, and you were really running really well. I mean, is it the Four Crown, or was there another race that you know? kind of stood out in your mind as a big win or yeah they're they're uh after midget week of uh indiana midget week where you know i i never i haven't won I, as of then i didn't win a use i've never won a usac midget race so it's that was i crashed there at kokomo really bad and i you know it was really eye-opening to me that you know i needed you know just and that's when i really started slowing everything down and and uh i ever since that crash at midget week uh it i i won the next three weekends i think and and then it was just it was it took off from there and i won belleville prelim night and ran second to final night and then i won at four crown and i won at granite city and i won up at sun prairie and it's it just really took off and and now it started to be getting on a roll and we you know we we're a top five car every night and so that's that then then your confidence is right up there and uh you know as long as as long as you're right there at the top five i think 
the wins will come and and you just got to be you know there at the end of the race and that's one thing Keith really taught taught me racing with him over these last three years is you know just just make it to that end of the race and you know th- this car will be there for you and uh you know that's one thing I've really learned to do and in the wing sprint cars this year is you know last year I was so consistent with being in that top five and you know, I, I won five sprint car races last year throughout my whole the, the whole year, and I, uh, you know, this year I've won five right off the bat. I, you know, last year I didn't win one till May, I think. So it's uh, it's just being there at the end and and racing the racetrack and you know racing, knowing the competitors you're racing around. Yeah, and you bring up Keith, and Keith does such a remarkable job of you know giving not only you but Tanner and and Chris such great cars to. Uh, you know, go out there and run with, and, and basically you guys were, you know, the class of the field for most of the year this year between you and Chris, and, you know, Tanner was right there a lot of times, too. Let's talk yeah. about, you know, what all, uh, you know, how is it running for Keith Coons? It's uh, it's it's very special. Keith, Keith's a very smart mechanic, and he's been around this sport so long, so he, he knows, and he's raced at these tracks for 20 years, you know, all these same tracks, so he knows. He's got notebooks and and he just builds all, every year off of, you know how the the last year was and uh, just a very 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 special and very unique situation to be racing with Keith Coons and and uh, this fleet of drivers he has with Christopher and Tanner and you know whenever Kyle comes it's it's uh, you know it, it all four of those cars are in the hunt to win each night whether it's me or Tanner or Christopher or, or Kyle when you know when Kyle was everyone's wants to be Kyle while he's there when he's there that's for sure <laughs> yeah and you know is it uh you know do you guys pretty much support each other or is it pretty much you know all, every man for himself or you yeah, know you guys no, help each we, other out we all we definitely all work together uh but when it's when we're on that racetrack it's uh it's every man for themselves or that's how I look at it so it's, you know they're uh they're out there you know doing the same thing I am and uh you know there's one thing that's been they want to win as much as I do. Yeah, and and you know it's going to be a great year for you guys, and lots lots to look ahead for you. And uh, what are uh, some of your sponsors? And you know, then what are your websites where people can kind of check you out? Yeah, my well, my website's just ricoabru dot com, and then I got my Twitter account that I'm I'm on quite a bit. And uh, but really, I just Jeannie and Brian Butler. Uh, you know, they they with my safety is huge this year, and. Over the last three years, we've improved my safety with my seats, and and then uh, you know my family they they all, they're really supportive for me, and that's those are the main people I got to thank, and then all the supporters that help me out throughout the year with you know Will Wood helps us, uh, BR Motorsports on the sprint car, and you know Brown and Miller they they're all a part of this team, and it's all it all uh, you know works out in the long run. Well, Rico, we we really liked having you on. You're a really cool guy. We can't wait to catch up with you here at Kokomo. And, uh, you know, we'll look forward to seeing you at the racetrack. Thank you, guys. And that was Rico Brew, and we're off to commercial, and we'll be right back. Sixby Apparel gives you the winning look. At Sixby Apparel, our award-winning design team gives your team style on or off the track. It's not too late to call Sixby Apparel now. You could be the best-dressed crew at your next race or trade show. And for you smaller teams, Sixby Apparel has no minimum on orders, so you can get the same look the big teams like Feld Motorsports, Lucas Oil Products, and more do at a great price. Call Sixby Apparel now at 702-587-3313. That's 702-587-3313 or log on to 6 Ever wonder what keeps the USAC Unleash radio team fired up besides their passion for racing? Crack open a can of the best tasting energy drink on earth, Liquid Nitro. Liquid Nitro products are infused with nothing but the finest ingredients, including three herbs and two B vitamins to give you the best quality energy drink your body can handle. Liquid Nitro Regular, Liquid Nitro Low Carb, and Liquid Nitro Tropical Storm Energy Drinks contain a blend of herbs and vitamins that produce clean energy without the crash or aftertaste and without those harmful side effects. Also, check out their line of liquid nitro shooters, a three ounce exotic berry flavored energy shot that tantalizes your taste buds. And hey guys, you might be interested in their liquid nitro fuel for passion. It's an all natural energy shot with a proprietary blend that helps us men feel, well, 
more productive. Check out their Facebook page at Liquid Nitro Beverages Midwest or their website at nitrobeverages.com. Real energy. No bull. Liquid Nitro. Everybody get up. And now, back to the guy who brags how long his um, lens is to his girlfriend's. Photo Man, we know there's no such thing as a nine-inch zoom. And then, no, well, there's Dirty Dan. <laughs> I love that. I love that re-entry, Photo Man. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing of it is, is when they're, you're drinking that liquid nitro male enhancement, there is such a thing as a nine-inch zoom. Oh, I'm going to have to try some of that out, but I'm married, so that probably won't happen. TJ, you got some news for us, brother? I definitely do. It looks like the USAC announced uh, their... Their inductees for the Hall of Fame this year, uh, George Vignati, Larry Branson, Larry Dixon, Norm Nelson, Don Smith, Bob Stroud, Roger Ward, and Bob Wente. And you can also go on to usacracing.com and you can vote for the, the actual the other eight that are going to be on there. So make sure to stop on by the USAC website and give a vote for who you'd like to see in the Hall of Fame. And we've also got Brownstown coming up this weekend, uh, followed by Terre Haute and Lawrenceburg. So we've got some racing coming up soon, and we'll actually have some stuff that we can get back to you on. I cannot wait. And that leads us in, Photo Man and Tommy Lee. The No Way Out 40 at Brownstown Speedway this weekend. All three of us, the Photo Man, Rich Foreman, Tommy Lee, TJ Crawford, and myself, Dirty Dan Smith, will be there, and we'll be uh, throwing some stuff up on not only the USAC Unleashed radio Facebook page, but the Performance Motorsports uh, Network Facebook page. But here's the biggie, guys. We're all going to be wearing some awesome Dirt Dog Gear t-shirts. Man, they've got some cool t-shirts, cool sayings. Photo Man, are you excited to put these t-shirts on this weekend? Man, I'm all jacked up. Well, that leads us into something that we uh, are bringing back with an extended amount of money. So, uh, Photo Man... We need a www.dirtdoggear.com prize vault combination. Yeah, this week's combination for that uh, bigger prize money there is going to be 2820. 2820. Now, we got new rules for this. You need to get over to the USAC Unleashed Radio uh, Show Facebook page. Look for the archive link where this contest is posted. And put it there now. Don't wait till the end of the show. Go over there and put 2820 in there. And you will be entered for a $50 free gift card to www.dirtdoggear.com. But you got to do it now. The contest shuts down this Friday, March 28th at 6 p.m. We will announce a winner. 50 bucks up for grabs. Man, I, I'm, that's a lot of money, Rich. Yeah, you're gonna definitely going to be able to pick up a lot of cool stuff from them with that gift card. That we are. That we are. Bob, you got anything to say before we get out of here, brother? Man, I am just so excited that we've got another one of these great shows in the can. You guys rocked it tonight. Thanks so much. Hey, not a problem, man. Now we need to get uh, the most important part of the show. Well, you know, the guests are important. I, I just throwed myself under the bus and caused all kinds of problems. <laughs> but uh, We need to thank our sponsors. We got... Liquid Nitro Beverages, uh, check them out at liquidnitrobeverages.com. Infinity Shocks, give AJ a call, man. He's got some cool stuff going on over there. 6B Apparel, Chris Boson, uh, look him up at 6BApparel.com. Anything for sublimated t uh, crew shirts and things like that, tents, all kinds of stuff, man. Some cool stuff there. Walker Race Promotions, man, they run our website. If you like what Brian Walker's doing for us, uh, not to mention all the other PR stuff he does for racers. He does a lot of stuff, don't he, Rich? Yeah, he does. And if you uh, want to check out what he does has done for us, go to www.usacunleashedradioshow.com. That's a fact. Racers Edge Supplements. Racers, if, if you're wanting to uh, uh, continue getting in shape this year, check out racersedgesupplements.com. We use them. Matter of fact, Rich has come down from 375 pounds to about 300 pounds. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, taking that stuff. Got you, photo man. <laughs> Give our buddy Noah Enos at Shell Shock a call. Shellshockpaint.com for some cool stuff. ProGlide's still giving away those 25% discounts. Uh, so get over there at ProGlideCodings.com. Check that out. Rich Foreman Photos, finer details, graphics. And with that, episode 007 is in the can. Check it out. Performance Motor, www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com. Our website, it's everywhere. And with that, photo man. Tommy Lee and Bob Steele. This is Dirty Dan Smith, USAC Unleashed Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. We'll catch you next week.
USAC Unleashed is a copyrighted production of PerformanceMotorsportsNetwork.com, a member of the Scorpion Radio Group, Inc., and may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page, USAC Unleashed Radio Show, or our section on the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either PMN or Scorpion Radio Group, Inc. Be listening next week as we rev it up with USAC Unleashed, exclusively on the Performance Motorsports Network. <laughs>